Hey everybody, Captain Jack here from the Minecrafters with another video tutorial of Tekkit Light IC2 Nuclear Power. Before I show you what I've made this time, I just want to issue a little bit of a disclaimer. Not everybody uses alternative texture packs. We use Fax Pure BD Craft because we like it. Um, a lot of people are really hardcore, vanilla only. Um, sorry if the images here are confusing. If you're a vanilla only person, uh, we just use what we like. So with that said, let's take a look at what we're using here. This is the first reactor I've made that combines IC2 with red power and it's an extremely powerful reactor and it's only a prototype. This is not stable. Well, it's not the most stable design, um, but it puts out a ton of power and it runs for a very long time without having to be shut off. What we have here is we have a standard nuclear reactor and I'll show you more about what's inside there in a second. Just got a lever to turn it on and off. Some lights here. That's an industrial alarm which makes very loud noises if the heat raises over 100. That's a thermal monitor right there attached to the reactor. We have an industrial um, industrial information panel that tells us how much heat the reactor has, how much heat it can take, and when it starts melting, what it outputs, and how much is remaining on the quad uranium cells that are inside. We have 4x insulated cable going to an HV transformer, to an MFSU, to a mass fabricator. Now I'm going to show you what this thing does, and then we're going to take a quick look at it, the back, and uh, see how this thing works. This is outputting 2,040 EU per tick. I really don't think you can get this any, I don't think you can raise the output anymore because the 4X cable just melts. So you can't fit any more uranium cells inside of here. And I think I have 22 quad uranium cells. Um, I'm using LZH condensators, which are basically just heat dumps. You can just continuously dump heat into them. They'll absorb it. They'll make it go away. But the problem with these is that they'll slowly, um, they'll slowly wear away. As you can see, they're at uh, 10, 1100 now. Um, they keep wearing down, and they'll just run out and deplete, and your reactor will blow up. So these need to be recharged, and you can recharge them with lapis. Uh, which is great because these are really hard to make. They're very resource intensive. Um, so it's a good thing we can recharge these. This one here is bopping in and out. Um, it's one of the problems I encountered with this setup, uh, but it really doesn't matter right now. I have two overclocked heat vents in the event that a couple of these disappear at once just so it can dissipate some of the heat because I think if more than two are gone, this reactor starts heating up real fast. Now again, this is a completely different design than anything I've made in the past. I am still um, experimenting with this. I'm not a pro by any means, and I'm just trying to show you guys what I've made, how nuclear power works, and uh, then you can use my designs, hopefully, to make your own and experiment in your own ways. So I'm going to turn this off, and what you're going to notice is that these LZH condensators are going to pop out, and they're going to pop back in. And when they pull out, they come back in completely recharged, 100%, which is great. And it's going to go through this entire reactor, and it's going to pull out everyone that's near depleted and put back in completely 100% um, new LZH condensators here. This reactor can run for probably somewhere around 8 to 10 minutes without ever having to turn it off which is fantastic because it lasts most it can last most of the night um, if you have HV arrays or if you have any kind of solar arrays this can provide power during the night when you have nothing coming in from the sun so this thing has gone through a whole cycle we have all completely 100 percent refilled LZH condensators and the reactor is ready to run again so what do we have here this is red power and I've tried to put signs and everything just so you can understand what's going on um, the first step is we're gonna pull out near depleted 
LZH condensators or semi-depleted and inside this filter if I can click on it there's a semi-depleted LZH condensator now it doesn't matter how deteriorated it is as long as it's deteriorated somewhat you don't have to exactly match the item ID as long as it has a little bit taken out this filter is going to pull out anything that's near depleted and it's going to shoot it into this automatic crafting table over here right here and this is going to bring in lapis and bring in the LZH condensator charge it up and send it out right here we have a lapis, lapis storage chest it's got a lot of lapis it's got a retriever and a retrievulator combination and this is saying anytime we have less than 64 lapis please go get one and put it in this here so if I take a bunch of these out this thing is gonna start firing up and it's gonna start filling up this lapis back so I am full any second now why is this not working there we go so it's loading this thing back up with lapis so I always have a constant supply so as these LZH condensators come in they'll immediately get recharged now this filter here is pulling all full LZH back into the reactor so it's shooting them up because the output side of automatic crafting tables mark 3 is on the top side so it's this filter is pulling it up through this accelerator and then into a mag tube and then we need another accelerator which decelerates it into this pneumatic tube here now unfortunately I couldn't make the accelerator or decelerator go directly into the reactor for some reason I'm not sure I was kinda of disappointed but this still works just as well and if I flip this on again you'll see how the cycle goes you can't see them come out but you can see them go back in and they go through that mag tube extremely quickly and pop right back in so this is a setup that continuously keeps these LZH condensators charged um, let me show you what's behind here we have this is jacketed blue wire and I use blue in most of my tutorial videos just so you can tell pretty easily what kind of wire it is um, all red power machines need bluetricity to power them and each red power machine conducts its own bluetricity so I can attach one wire between these two and they'll transfer the power I have solar panels up top with a battery box real quickly there it is and they're coming down and giving this retriever power as well as these two accelerators now this is just again it's a preliminary design it's not the most ideal setup this is a sequencer and basically three of these will push out an LZH condensator and one click of this yellow wire here will pull will pull an L, uh, near depleted LZH condensator out so this is ticking every once in a while that's pulling out the green wire here is hooked up to this filter that's ticking pushing it back into the reactor um, this reactor makes a ton of power you basically can't get a reactor that puts out more power than this there it goes it's going very very quickly um, so this is it this is my latest reactor um, hope you guys like it this uses red power too along with IC2 to create an extremely powerful reactor that could be put on probably a 10 minute cycle it has very little downtime once these things filter all the way through it'll just pull them one by one and I don't think it really takes more than 30 seconds for every single one of these LZH condensators to refill get back in and restart now one of the problems I found when I made this design just in case you're going to make your own is that I had set this filter to pull out full LZH condensators and it had backed up at one point and almost exploded on me and that's because I ran the reactor for too long some of these LZH condensators got a little bit too low and since one lapis only restores 40,000 heat of the 100,000 that LZH condensators can absorb they weren't fully recharging and unfortunately a downside of this automatic crafting table is that you can't put a stack of three lapis which is what a, a near depleted or almost all the way depleted LZH 
would need. You can't put three of these lapis in one of these slots. So it's only going to restore 40k and then shoot it back up, which is why I had to add this extra near depleted LZH condensator so it would still send near depleted ones back through the system. Um, the other problem is that I told you about earlier, I wanted a reactor that would continuously replace these um, based on their level of depletion so that I would never ever have to turn this thing off and unfortunately because of the way filters work I don't think that's a possibility so every once in a while every 10 minutes or so or 8 minutes you have to turn this off let it cycle through fill up and then flip it back on and that would require obviously a different logic circuit setup um, but this could be a very very good reactor it's really very stable as long as your timer is set up correctly and you're pulling things in and out as they should I think I worked out most of the bugs in this one um, and there we have it it's a 2040 EU per tick output nuclear reactor um, and I'm pretty impressed with this one I'm gonna keep working on these designs I'm gonna keep trying to find a reactor that I can continuously power without ever having to worry about shutting it off and I also want to work on uh, breeder reactors which is something that I haven't really dabbled in at all because in our Tekkit Lite server we've had a problem with keeping up with the amount of uranium it takes to make each one of these quad uranium cells so I want to figure out a way to generate uranium cells without using a lot of uranium I hope you guys like this uh, visit us at our website theminecrafters.com uh, rate our videos subscribe we'll keep coming out with more stuff we're just trying to pass along what we know uh, to the youtube community because we love Man minecraft and we want others to love it just as much as we do so thank you for watching